Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio, and wow, I have not made any art or any videos or anything for over a week. <laughs> and um, I was watching a live stream, uh, Mary Beth Shaw yesterday, and and the, she and the and also the people in the comments of the live stream were talking about how after the holidays you just have this slump and you're just tired and you want to you know you've been you've been rushing around decorating and baking and wrapping presents and you know getting all these things done and then you're just like oh and I know I'm not the only one I know there's tons of people out there who feel like this and I thought today when I got up this morning that I would go to my studio and I would make something and I, I decided to call um, them warm-up pages January 2020 warm-up pages because you know if you just will sit down and do it you will have fun and I know this intellectually, I know this, we all know this, but it's just so hard sometimes to do it. So I went into my studio, I found a little piece of paper that I thought was inspiring, it was warm, it was colorful, and I decided to start with that. So my other issue, and I'm gonna show you just a little short video clip of what my other issue is for getting things done. My regular routine for the last four years that I've been doing my channel and longer longer than that but you know I get up in the morning about six I go to my studio I work I do something I make something I video it then I come into um, where my computer is and I edit it and then I upload it uh, usually I'm uploading um, a day or two or sometimes longer ahead so that I can have the thing available at 7 a.m. in the morning my time which is when you expect my videos to come out because that's what I've been doing for four years. Well, let me just show you this little uh, video clip right now. So this is me trying to photograph my project this morning and <laughs> yeah. Come on, Mika. I would like to take a picture, please. Come on. This is my new companion my new emotional support dog that we adopted on the 27th of December. Her name is Mika and she's about 12 pounds. She's some type of a, a mixed breed. Uh, they think maybe some Pomeranian. She's kind of a red color and has the face, but to me, she just looks like a little red fox kind of. Uh, she's cute, she's adorable, she's loving. She wants to sit on your lap. She wants to cuddle. She, she wants to sleep with you. She wants to, I mean, she just, she's everywhere that I am. She follows me around and that is awesome. I'm absolutely not complaining about that, but you can see that it makes a little bit of difference when I have this disaster in my studio and there's everything for her to get into, which I haven't cleaned up. And then she wants to be on my lap. She wants to um, be where I am. She wants to, to lay on my feet. She wants to be, you know, I just, I can't get anything done. It's so funny. It, it's just hilarious and also annoying at the same time. So that just gives you an idea of where I've been at. I'm trying to adjust. I'm trying to get get things into a routine around here where you know we we have to think about think about the dog all the time now. So she's become queen of the household. She's in charge of everyone. And I do sometimes get someone to babysit her so that I can get something done. Um, she will lay down, like if I'm working, she she knows that, that she should lay down and uh, just wait. But if I sit down anywhere, she thinks she needs to be on my lap. And it's kind of hard to do art if something is on your lap, licking your face. <laughs> so that's the other thing that I'm dealing with. But Back to the warm-up pages. I just I just think it would be a good idea to do a, pay, a little tiny page um, when I have a chance for the next couple weeks in January 2020 to get started. Um, I haven't signed up for any classes or, you know, done anything like Nat Callback's um, January Jumpstart or anything like that. I don't have anything going on. I do have some things that I need to do. And so I have a list of things, of videos that I need to make. Um, and I will. I just have to figure out exactly how my new work schedule is going to work with Mika. 
So this little journal is, is I haven't worked in it very much. I think I've only made one other page. Uh, this was given to me by Rennie and she bought it in um, New Orleans. She bought one for herself and she loved it so much that she went back and bought it for me. And when I met up with her, she came down to Tucson and um, I met up with her for coffee and she gave it to me. And it's, it's really fun. It's, um, it's made by Mayan Indians of Southern Mexico and it has <clears throat> carnations, pansies, asparagus, corn silk, sugar cane, banana fronds, fig bark, bamboo, bougainvillea, mesquite, coffee, cotton. Um, it has all these handmade natural fibers in it, which are, of course, right up my alley. It's kind of a recycled looking brown paper. It's pretty thin, so it's not super easy to do my kind of stuff in it. But um, I can, obviously. So I decided to start with collage, which I do very frequently, almost all the time. I, I'm a, at heart a collage artist. That's what I love to do. And so I had that piece of paper that had some jelly print on it. It looked like um, it was some type of a dictionary page, I think in another language. Let me look at it. I like them when they're in other languages because then I don't know what they say and it doesn't uh, <laughs> affect what I'm doing or, um, you know, I don't care what it says because I can't read it. So that's always awesome. Sometimes people will send me these and I'm always appreciative when I get one in a different language. And then I have some other scraps on my desk. You know, I have a little bin of stuff on my desk that just has some bits and pieces of things, small pieces. And I started with the, that larger piece that has the um, fluorescent pink and blue and orange. Uh, I tore that kind of in two thirds and one thirds and put it on either side of the page. And that, that gives me like an enclosed space. Okay, here's my space. This is where I'm going to work. Um, I like to do that. I, I think it's very important to have different color, that the same color in different areas of your composition, no matter whether, what whatever you're making, whether it's an art journal page or a tag or an ATC or, a, you know, a canvas or, you know, something larger, it's, it, it balances the eye and allows, you know, balances the brain really and allows you to look around the entire composition if you see the color in more than one place. So ripping the pa paper into a couple pieces and putting it in a couple places really starts the composition for me. And then I'm just grabbing pieces out of that bin and putting them down, moving them around, looking at where I think they should go. Um, I tend to like this uh, vertical and horizontal play against each other when I'm collaging that. I just like that. That's something that makes me happy. It's, I guess, maybe part of my style. I don't know. People say I have a style. I never see it because I have such, such a variety of interests that it never seems to me that I have a style. Um, what are these little pieces of paper? A lot of them are little scraps of painty paper that maybe I used on something else and then I just have a little piece left and I throw it in that small bin on the desk. Uh, some other ones are things like this, this larger piece that I put with the flower on it and some type of writing in the back. Um, that's actually a note from somebody that I received when I did a swap or something. And it has, it has the person's writing on one side. It's like a notebook paper, but then it has some stamping or I think it must be stamping on the other side. Maybe she used uh, gray with uh, some type of a text stamp. And then there's some flower stamps and a, and a pink color, a pink fuchsia color. And I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about color composition. I'm thinking about shapes and the play between horizontal and vertical that I enjoy. I'm thinking about um, bringing in other pieces of paper that have similar colors to the ones I started with and then some that are completely opposite like that. That green paper with the green paint on it also has bright pink in the back which shows through a little bit but it also has some turquoise and it has that really bright green color and it's 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 contrasting against the orange at the bottom there on the other piece of paper. 
Then I have that lighter blue paper that kind of brings back in that blue color from the back paper. And the flowers are stamped in pink. The text is similar. You know, I've got I've got text paper that had painting on it to begin with. Then I've got that other piece that's kind of reds and blacks because I wanted some um, black or a neutral. It didn't have to be black, but it turned out to be black. It was my neutral. I also used some tea bags from this morning there, a piece of tea bag paper um, to begin with. I was going to leave the background, the color of the paper, which is a craft color. And I, I do like having that craft color in there, but the paper was starting to buckle and I knew that I wasn't going to put uh, collage over every single inch of it. Like I could have started by putting, you know, covering the entire page with some sort of piece of paper to stiffen it up and make it more durable. But since I knew I wasn't going to do that, I decided to use some white gesso. So I did put some uh, white gesso around. I left some of the areas um, craft colored where I had put the tea bag. I didn't completely cover everything. But I thought that having that um, white gesso on there would help the paper because I don't want to I don't want to ruin the paper. I want this book to stay intact. So either it's going to need to have acrylic on it or it's going to need to have collage on it or something so that the, the paper doesn't get ruined and, you know, wear through and tear and all those things that can happen with a thinner weight paper. That's why I tend to use really heavy paper when I do stuff because I'm, a, I'm abusive to the paper. <laughs> I glue stuff to it. I slap stuff on it. I have wet media in. You know, that's just how it goes. Um, I've got this baby wipe. Uh, when I started to kind of press down, uh, this was a sticker, by the way. Uh, my mom saved stuff for me from her her various mail, and um, there's some stickers. I didn't want the edge, so I tore it off, but I wanted the words, and then I had a couple extra pieces that I thought I would put around. And when I started to uh, clean up the glue and kind of press it down with a wet baby wipe, the ink on the sticker started to come off and I thought it was kind of cool. So I uh, rubbed off some of the ink on the other two little pieces and it kind of gave it a grungy look. I thought it was interesting. Uh, that, that ink came right off that paper. So it was interesting. I've left it. I thought it was good for the composition. So then I thought I would bring it back in some of the white because now I had very blocky areas of color and very blocky areas of white gesso. So I used a stencil. This one is um, from Stencil Girl Club. Uh, I think last month or maybe the month before. It just, I like to keep these little stencils that have some, some sort of an all over pattern to use for integration to um, make areas where the collage meets the background and becomes part of it. And so I used that same white gesso and a little sponge to integrate a couple areas. So now the white's coming in to the foreground and it's also giving me a pattern on either side. And that made me happy. I thought that made my page look more balanced. So then I had the black words on the sticker and I wanted more black. And I wanted to bring out that flower on that paper. So I got out my Stabilo All pencil, which is a water, highly water soluble, reactive to water very much <laughs> um, type of a pencil. And I drew around the flower and then I blended it out with a brush that has water in it. And in the, in the handle, it's an aquash brush by Pintel. And I put some of that more black on the other side to balance it. Then I wanted to bring back the bright pink that originally inspired the entire page and it got kind of lost in the background. It's a fluorescent acrylic paint, fluorescent pink. So I just used my finger and then another little sponge to add that bright pink back in. That's what, that's what caught my eye this morning. I wanted to use that bright pink and just brighten up my life. It's dark outside in the morning. It's cold. We've been having strangely cold weather. I don't know why. It's just 
Maybe it's just me, but I think it's colder than usual because I don't usually get cold in Arizona. So, yeah, I even have a little space heater that I got for Christmas for my studio because my studio is always colder than every place else. So, yeah, I brought back in some of that pink. And then I was looking at the flower and I thought that it needed something in the center. So I put some uh, Naples yellow and then that color is around because one of the pieces that I tore was manila paper. It was probably on an, from an envelope or something, a manila envelope that you mail with. And then that same color was on the edges. And so I decided to bring in some of that yellow. And I did, after I turned off the camera, glue a sequin and a pearl to the center of the flower because I just, it looked, it still didn't look the way I wanted it. But that was after I turned off the camera. So I hope you've enjoyed this little warm-up page project. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe, turn on your notification bells, share this on Pinterest. And of course, um, all those things help my channel. Anything that you can do to help me always makes me happy. <laughs> so I took out the paper. It was kind of stuck <laughs> and then trimmed off the edge. Um, from that kitty cat page that I had done last year sometime. And that was it. So here comes some close ups and I hope you all are having a great beginning to 2020. And yeah, you'll probably see some more of these warm up pages coming across my channel. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <music>